I'm going to have a conversation with the CEO of OASA, Alan Poon King, and we're going to speak about the drought situation and um, the different things surrounding that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you and your viewers. Uh, good morning to you as well, and of course, good morning to the rest of Trinidad and Tobago, and good morning to all of Wasa. And I'm um, very happy to speak with you this morning because the drought is a big um, issue at this point in time, and it affects a lot of us. Um, it also affects farmers and such. Um, so I'd like to find out from you, the CEO of Wasa, um, you know, what is Wasa's stance in, as pertains to the drought and um, what is being done thus far? Okay. Um but first of all, with respect to, to the current dry season conditions, the, we have been in touch and continue to be in touch with the Met Services. And based on their projections, we adjust our, our situation to suit um, the information that they provide us. Right. They have indicated that we would have had a harsh dry season, which we have seen come to pass. Um, and in fact, it started, the dry season conditions started in December. Um, so we are a bit challenged, but we, we are adjusting as required to ensure that we have continuity of supply throughout the dry season. Um, so we, we do adjust our schedules. We have been forced to reduce production at some, some of the major plants, but we have adjusted um, the schedules, which in effect means reduced regularity of, of, of delivery to, to some communities. All right, and um, one of the things that um, is happening as well, because some of the people who are most affected are farmers, and they say that they're having problems and are forced to being sell, being forced to sell animals, etc. Um, do you have anything to say to that? Okay, with respect to the to the farming community, farming would would, would comprise two two components. The, the if you have um, crops or if you have livestock, in terms of the crops, the the irrigation water, uh, we do our portable water wouldn't be for, for that purpose. Yeah. Um, water for, for irrigation would have to be drawn from um, rivers or streams or, or aquifers um, going through the appropriate process to get the approvals to do that. Um, with respect to the livestock part, um, livestock would normally use, use um, portable, portable water. The portable water that, that is, is utilized um, you have to have the infrastructure to accept the water when we do send it. So if you have a large farm, um, you would need probably a minimum of a two-inch connection. Right. If you have a three-quarter-inch connection under normal conditions, you wouldn't get adequate water. Right. So we have our part to play. You have your part to play to make sure you can accept the water as we send it. Um, you said that for the crops generally, they would um, irrigate their um, land space um, and crop space with water from natural waterways such as rivers and the like. Um, is there any way in which WASA can assist those farmers um, with uh, any type of water supply, not necessarily um, potable water supply, but is there any way that WASA can assist farmers um, in regards to their crops that they, said they well, say are being lost? All right. Well, we, we, we deal in, in potable or drinking water. Um, so to, to raw water, we don't deliver raw water. So raw water would have to be drawn directly, as I said, from, from streams or rivers, as the case may be. I know those, those would be, um, you have reduced flows. Um, so the other alternative is well, but as I say, there's a process to go through with, with, with regula the regulations with respect to drawing of such, such water. Um, and the Ministry of Agriculture, um, they would normally um, assist with, 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 with the infrastructure required for, for such water. All right. is, is there any sort of things from the farmers and any type of applications that they can make or certain requirements that need to be met for um, some of these plans to be put into action? Well, as I said, if, 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 if you have a particular situation and you need to, to, to get water from an aquifer, the Water Resources Agency, which is an arm of WASA, um, you can apply to them and they look at the particular situation uh, to see if, if, if the, the particular source that you are, you're looking to draw water from, can it provide water on a sustained basis without affecting um, whether WASA is drawing from that aquifer or other, other users or the aquifer itself. We, we, we need to protect the aquifers to make sure they don't drop off um, to a to, to, to lower level. Definitely, definitely. Um, now, in regards to the desalination plant, um, that is something that we had um, constructed um, years ago, which helps with the water situation and the ability to supply um, water. Is that something that is being used as full capacity at this point in time and can then um, help the public in some way? 
Well, we have two desalination plants, one in Point Lisas, which does 40 million gallons of water, and one in Point Fortin, which does 5.6 million gallons a day. And both are at capacity. Um, so we are utilizing the, the supplies from those two sources together with our um, surface and, and groundwater sources towards um, distribution across our network. All right, CEO of Wasa, Alan Poon King, I want to thank you for joining us this early morning and um, sharing this information with us as pertains to the drought and the water situation in the country um, as it currently stands. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, Trinan and Neil, so you have a great morning. And now giving us another perspective of the ongoing Wasa issues, we are joined on the phone by the Minister of Public Utilities, Senator the Honorable Robert LaHunt. Senator, are you with me this morning? Yes. I'm still with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. continuing the conversation, because Thank from you. a ministerial position, we do want to get some insight on the perspective of the, well, response almost, to the chairman of the penal Deby Re Regional Corporation saying that you got, well, Wasa is guilty of a geographical discrimination. Any thoughts on that one? Yeah, well, I Good morning, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I heard those, those, those comments, and I found them very unfortunate comments. I mean, the reality is, you know, the, the, the country is going through, and certain parts of the country specifically, is going through a very difficult trying time, and this is a time that we need to all work together rather than try to incite, in my mind, these types of casting blame where they're not supposed to be. I don't think it does anything for us as a country to always run to discrimination and these types of, of accusations. They make people believe that there, there are issues, there are cynical reasons why things are happening and not the real reason for it. Um, I had a chat with the, with, the, with the chairman and I explained to him the situation. I have been in constant contact with with, with him, I have been in constant contact with the MPs in the affected areas, and I could say categorically there is no idea of discrimination. As I said to the chairman when I spoke, I said, you know, do you know that my whole family comes from Saparia area, the Saparia area? I mean, why would I, uh, as a minister, discriminate against my own family um, in, in that particular area? We have some challenges with regard to water, we have some challenges as we have been advertising and selling individuals since December, January. We have a campaign out, right. every drop counts, about to look at this particular situation. And we have challenges as we have always had in the water situation in Trinidad and Tobago, right. which impacts the extremities. And in that particular case, in certain for unique areas of distribution of getting water to particular areas, it is sometimes not possible for us under the present circumstances where we are reducing our actual supply of water. And that is basically the problem. The problem stems from the climate, the, 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 the environment, the environmental issues that we are facing um, with regard to our reduced supply of water, right. the fact that our dams are below the required levels, and as a result, we have had to put the country on schedule. And I dare say, this is nothing new yeah. to Trinidad and Tobago. We have always operated with on a schedule system in certain parts of Trinidad and Tobago. We have indeed. And based on that, from a ministerial standpoint, would there be a development of any sort and changes towards those plans as this problem continues to persist? Well, you know, again, I, I mean, it's unfortunate. We have heard in Trinidad and Tobago lots of water for all campaigns. Right. And a lot of different views as to exactly how many people receive water 24-7. The reality is in Trinidad and Tobago, we do not, we, we, a big part of the population receive water on schedule. This is an inherited situation, and there's a lot of legacy issues as concerning our water distribution and the integrity of our water lines and so forth that we do have. We are addressing this matter. Um, we are drilling new wells. We are looking at changing out some of the infrastructure and some of the lines that are 
really um, that are showing a lot of leaks. But it is not a situation that's going to happen overnight. I am putting things in place at water and doing what we can. But again, at this point in time, we have to try to do more with less. It's a pity when we had a lot of resources, all these situations were not resolved. But we are living with what we have now. And I am working with water closely, reducing the number of leaks that we have in the system, paying particular attention to that. And as I said, trying to improve the infrastructure at a time when we have limited resources. And on that note, we will say thank you very, very much, Senator the Honorable Robert Lehunt, because giving the people advice on what is being done to make sure that we have a strong fight against this drought that we're facing is definitely some good news. So thank you again for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. And again, I just want to let the people of Trinidad and Tobago know that water is doing their best at this particular time. Conservation of water is important, even even places where you are privileged because of the distribution system to be able to get 24-7 water or 24-3 water, the, all the water comes from one source. And therefore, even if you have water, this is really time that we all have to come together as a country, be our brother's keeper, and conserve water. Because if you are able to conserve, then you make, us, uh, you, you make it Easier more everyone. available to the other parts of the country where we do have to send the water via, via our system and where we do have schedules. So this is a time that we all have to bind together and try to see how we could get past it. Conservation is important, all right? There are lots of things that we could do. We have a lot of ads out there. You could take a little shorter showers. You could look at how you are flushing your toilet. We could look at how we are washing wares. We could look at how we are watering plants. All of these things are things that are little tips that will oh. that will go a long way. Mm -hmm. The campaign is every drop counts. Every drop counts. really mean that every single drop of water comes at this point in time. Thank you again, sir. And okay. thank you for making sure that you do your part. Because I know you do, Kari. Yeah, most <laughs> definitely. Um, you know, water is a precious commodity and um, not everyone is fortunate. Um, we are fortunate to be in Trinidad and Tobago where we have a constant supply of water, um, of clean, potable water. And, um, you know, we are, we are fortunate that we do have a body that is seeking the best interests of the people as pertains to that. Yeah, and we've got um, both sides of the table, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>